Well, I knew that title would get your attention. There are some people who think that I have it in for the judges in this country. Couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, not only uh, do I respect their role, if there's any change I'd like to make to the way they do their job, it's to make their jobs easier. Because after direct democracy comes to Canada, our courts judges will still wake up each morning, go to work, put on their fancy gowns, and for all I care, make rulings that uh, we have to paint all the roads in the country green because environmentalists say it's a good idea. Court rulings are less important to me than the consequences of those rulings and how they're dealt with. I mean, where would we get all that green paint anyway? I'm really quite uninterested, uh, uh, too, in how judges are appointed or elected or how they otherwise uh, get their very powerful roles. And disregard any suggestion that I want to influence the independence of judges. That's a deflection tactic from those who simply want to terminate debate before it gets around to the real question. No, my challenge to the Supreme Court is much more fundamental than the decisions they make or how they're appointed to the bench. My interest is in challenging the unquestioned authority that's been delegated to them by uh, the elected representatives of our government who just don't want to really face the serious problems of the day. So it's more fundamental than the decisions they make or how they're appointed to the bench. My interest is in challenging the unquestioned authority that these unelected individuals have over our fates and that of our country. I wish to challenge their power. All judges take their jobs very seriously and arrive at decisions based on legal precedent, wisdom of personal and uh, professional experience and knowledge, and, and also, no doubt, using what compassion is permitted to seep into their thinking when a debate over injustices and human rights are brought before them in court cases. When following the hard, cold logic of written laws, this latter point can be a real test of a progressive, compassionate nation. So, judges' profound intellectual strengths and qualifications are what I wish to retain as the greatest nonpartisan source of advice in our country. But advisors, chiefly. For civil and criminal matters, there is no better system than our independent judiciary. And for, for civil and criminal matters, which used to make up the bulk of the court's business uh, before the Charter of Rights came along, I believe their rulings in those matters must not be questioned. But when it comes to deciding questions that shape our society, the definition of our community standards, or other matters that speak to the very character of our country, as we and others around the world see it, I believe we must take our decisions primarily, their decisions primarily as advice. So too there can be a question of the feasibility of court decisions uh, when sheer budgetary affordability is at the crux of the matter. The taxpaying voter and their elected representatives must retain the final word on that domain. And I would rather save the courts from that most difficult debate, deciding the disbursement of our precious tax resources. That is precisely what elections, party platforms, and visions, and governments are for. Our judiciary should not be our supreme rulers, but instead partners with our elected representatives and the people of the country. For we must not forget the people of the country. It's too easy to do that. Example, in the great debate of the repatriation of the Constitution 25 years ago, where one side said that the courts should rule supreme and the other that the government should rule supreme. The debate missed a vital consideration. What about the people? As usually happens in constitutional debates, those in charge get to frame the question so it's easy to ignore the most important stakeholders of all. In the clamor for attention between politicians, the media, lobby groups, academics and experts, it's just too easy to forget that it is the millions of ordinary voting citizens who make up society. Everybody else is just renting time. 